Happy Wednesday! I'm Jen Lormond, exercise physiologist, mom of three, and co-owner of Tighten Your Tinkler. I'm Christina Walsh, physical therapist, mom of two, and co-owner of Tighten Your Tinkler. First of all, you may notice a little change. We have revived We're back to our old set. Our old set. For those of you who are new, uh, this is the way we used to do it. And we're going back to the talk show style with our chairs today. Yeah. <laughs> we're super excited to help uh, help you guys come to some light bulb moments today about two major things you may not be realizing are making you go have to tinkle even more often. Yep, and I think we did a spoiler, if you're on our email list, we did a spoiler alert last week that one of those involved the porta potty squat. <laughs> the porta potty squat. <laughs> Why did this come to mind right now, you might yeah. ask for us? We are here in New Orleans, and it is Mardi Gras time. It's carnival season, so that means for a lot of us using less than 100% clean and desirable toileting facilities. <laughs> While you're on the parade route, it's <laughs> happening right now. So, you might be finding yourself tempted to, or have you ever been to a music festival? It's obviously not just Mardi yeah. Gras, right? We've all been in those situations um, where there's just no clean stalls in the public restroom you're in. So, you might be tempted to hover over that seat, but what that causes is an inability to completely let out all of the pee. Yep, your because pelvic floor isn't able to fully relax. And so you retain that pee and you actually have to go to the bathroom sometimes quite quickly after you've done the porta potty squat. Yep, so you can't blame that all on the beer. <laughs> although <laughs> although that's part of it. Although alcohol is a bladder irritant, so <laughs> that is also probably part of the problem. But part of the problem is that if you're doing that hover over the seat thing, like Jen said, you cannot physically relax your pelvic floor, which is how you completely empty your bladder, which leads us right into number yeah. two. <laughs> which we actually see a lot with teachers and healthcare professionals, I feel like specifically, or anyone, I guess that has a service-based job where they're working maybe like we are with clients, and when you do have a potty break, it's like a 30 second potty break. And sometimes you have to create that break because you don't have a break. <laughs> and so what do you do? You start pushing your pee out. And if you're pushing your pee out, you are not gonna be able to completely empty your bladder. We know because we've had this conversation with so many so women many. that some of you right now are going, oh, oh my God. gosh, how did they know? <laughs> and some of you are going, huh. I wonder, I wonder if I'm doing that and don't even realize it. So either way, check next time you go, are you fully relaxing your pelvic yeah. floor to a, allow a peaceful passage of all the contents of your bladder? Or are you potentially trying to push to hurry, hurry because you're a busy mom or you have another client coming in or you need to get back to your desk for that conference call or your patients can't wait? whatever you might be pushing your pee out and just like Jen said same problem with the porta potty squat it means you cannot fully relax your pelvic floor and those are the muscles that have to relax to let it all out and so what are some other consequences of this aside from just running to the restroom that can also because urine retention is a breeding ground for bacteria and so if you're having you uh, recurrent UTIs that could also be due to not emptying your bladder fully. Yep. So, so maybe if you have recurrent UTIs, the first thing you can try to check in with is to make sure you're not pushing out your pee. Just letting it relax and letting it come out. And in our Tighten Your Tinkler program, we do go into some other toileting postures specific to bladder prolapse um, to help women be able to fully evacuate their bladder as well as the other half of the pelvic bowl. We teach a lot more about how to deal with living with a rectocele or rectal prolapse as well. But for this show, we're staying pee-pee focused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we thought it was quite relevant uh, last week when we were talking about parades and I was like, oh yeah, we have to talk about that. The porta potty squat and yeah. we, we all know what we're talking about. Um, and you know, what do you do about that? Uh, it's a little trickier. Yeah. You can carry hand sanitizer with you, some wipes of some kind, sanitizing wipes. Uh, that is definitely a trickier one to manage than just 
checking in with making sure you're not pushing your pee out. Um, but at least now you have an understanding of why it might matter and what kind of the consequences or side effects of that maneuver are for all and of us. Obviously, hopefully all of you have indoor plumbing and aren't doing the porta potty squat on the regular. So obviously with those instances, you might not be able to do anything about it, but you know, hey, you're gonna be using the restroom more if all you have access to is porta potties. But thinking about that daily behavior pattern, making sure that you aren't pushing your pee out. And I think many of us since having children have probably been doing that for a while because you got you know the baby and the bouncy and you got the toddler knocking on the door and you got no time to yourself and so you're just trying to get things done as quickly as possible and sometimes that's all it takes and then you're in the habit yep so maybe your kids are older but you're still doing that because you never got out of the habit you didn't even realize you were doing it and that's a lot of women that we work with so whether a lot of the busy bodies that we work with if you're someone that you know you're just a busy body you have a lot to do you you're moving and grooving all the time. I find that those are the ladies that are really pushing their pee out still after their children You're have left home. Right. But these are powerful tips and bits of knowledge to move forward with. And a big, big one is just not pushing out your pee. And that can really decrease frequency of urinary tract infections, like Jen said, because it will allow full emptying of the bladder, which then means there won't be bacteria growing in the residual pee that's left in there. So that's a fantastic tip. Uh, go forth and relax your pelvic floor on the toilet. That's right. If you have any comments or questions in regards to toileting positions or any feedback for us in terms of show topics that you would love to hear us cover, we would love it if you would drop that in the comments below. If it's a personal thing, please DM us. And um, until then, we're gonna be gone next week. Yep, speaking of body gras, we'll yep. be <laughs> missing next week, uh, enjoying some festivities and Jen's traveling, but we can't wait to be with you the week after that again. And until then, so we'll see you live in two weeks. Yep.